Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster. I try to put, I would put, if I could put the lulls in licorice, I would. Uh, but it, it, those, it, I said, well, that doesn't, because I had a licorice flavored cough drop. And then I said, well, I put the arse in anise uh, for sure. And I said, well, that doesn't quite work. But you know why it doesn't really, you know, my rhyming schemes, uh, I mean, really take your mind off stuff, keep you company, because it's time. That's the only one I'm running is uh, the, the lulling, soothing tones and pointless meanders, because it's time for sleep with me, the podcast uh, that's here to put you to sleep. And when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, you could listen now, sit up in bed now, or go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors, because here's the ways uh, we keep the show going. Hey, everybody, have you checked out our merch store lately? Because we've got a brand new tee in there, Bernie the Butterfly Nature Strikes Back t-shirt. Uh, you finally get your chance to wear Bernie the Butterfly around town. Show people, uh, rock your Sleep With Me merch. Not only that, we have a wonderful sleep spray. We have uh, custom Sleep With Me sleep phones, uh, some lo- lovely tank tops, and some sleep pants. Check them all out at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. At sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Hey, get over there and share me with a share with me a picture and let me know my, my wording's off. Uh, but get over there, rock some Sleep With Me merch. Let me know about it so I can thank you. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. All right, I wanted to thank a couple people uh, today. I wanted to thank Mark, who purchased a koala mattress in Australia. Uh, koala is an amazing uh, Australian sponsor. And I want to thank Melissa, who picked up a Quip toothbrush. You can find all their sponsors, uh, whether you want to be like Melissa getting a great Quip toothbrush or Mark getting an amazing koala mattress, you could do that. Just go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors and then tag the sponsor, tag me if you purchase something so we can both say thank you. Just like we're thanking Mark and Melissa today uh, for bringing the podcast free to everybody. Uh, thanks so much. And this is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard. A lot of people help out in this show. Who are There's they? Posty poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Write us down or on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. See the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance Part of Nine Vale presents. So now on with the show. Uh, thanks, Mr. Bard. I'm at Deer Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. And you know the, the the great huge way to support Sleep with Me, the way Sleep with Me has grown over all of the years, is your your power, your word of mouth. Uh, so if you ever have an opportunity to share your natural experience with the podcast, uh, in person or online. Uh, that's really how the show goes, it grows. And then you find other people who say, well, the podcast may or may not work for them. Uh, but if it does, that's great. You're helping them get a good night's sleep. Uh, uh, so if you're empowering their good night's sleep uh, and you're helping the show too. And I'll tell you what, I appreciate it. So thank you. Uh, what do you say we get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed and turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, feelings, uh, physical sensations, uh, change, you know, so stuff you're thinking about, stuff you're experiencing physically or uh, feeling emotionally, uh, time, temperature, travel, 
anything, you know, whatever it is, uh, whatever's keeping you up, uh, I'd like to help and I'd like to create a safe place where you could, uh, what, what am I supposed to say here? What, what, are you up all night tossing to my mind? Don't get into the tossing. Well, I'm going to sleep with me. No, I, I, here's, here's the thing. When you naturally forget stuff and you kind of feel, I'm here to keep you company too. And we're still trying to think of how the, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from beyond the bank. Hey, are you up all night tossing and turning, mind racing, trouble getting sleep? Well, welcome to Sleep With Me, podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. There we go. Uh, all you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. So that was the part I forgot there. Sorry about that. I had to come back to you. Welcome. I'm going to try to create a safe place where you could set aside all that stuff. You know, I'm smoothing it, I'm patting it, rubbing it down. I'm saying safe place making plenty of room. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use the lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, not, you know, total, like, nonsense for sure. We go off topic, uh, get mixed up. All this, Some of this is, no, well, I guess sometimes I like to say some of it's intentional but really, it's like it, some's intentional, a lot of it's natural. It, but the whole idea is uh, really to keep you company and, and uh, to, to kind of loosely hold your attention as you drift off, right? And if you're new and you're here, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And let me tell you a couple of things to expect because uh, you probably are naturally skeptical or wondering, huh, what is this thing or what, what's going on here? Or you say, what is, what is, or you might say, what is going on here? Or you say, what in the gosh, 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 my gosh is going on here? And I still say that a lot of times. So I'm glad you're here. Thanks for trying the show out. I really appreciate it. And here's a couple of things to know. Okay. So the show is definitely different. And so from a lot of feedback I've gotten over the years, uh, approach it loosely, like you're observing it out of focus. Because if you try to, uh, if 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 you try to look at it straightforwardly, I don't know. Like they used to have this thing called three. What are those called? Three D eye paintings or something? That's not what the magic eye, uh, something or other. And now I'm going off topic already. But it, but it was, so please, this would be when I'd say if you're new, you like uh, if you could indulge me, or I could come back to it. Actually, you're more important than my uh, metaphor. Hopefully, I'll remember magic eye paintings. Uh, but yeah, kind of look at it loosely. That's one thing to remember. Structurally, here's how the podcast works. It starts out with a few minutes of business. That's because our goal is to keep the podcast free and coming out twice a week. And the sponsors and the people that support the show are the way we do that. Then uh, there's an intro, which we've started here. And the intro is a little bit different because usually the intro is just kind of like a little bit like walking through a doorway. Uh, and uh, like, we, we, okay, I guess we could use a 3D metaphor here. Uh, it's like watching a 3D movie. You just put the glasses on and it's in 3D, right? Like, you, Or you get on a 3D ride or you go to a 3D movie, you put the glasses on. And you expect to see the, effect, the 3D effects, right? I think we can agree on that. Where a 3D eye painting or whatever, the magic eye painting, whatever they're called, it kind of looks like some something like fractal type of art at first. And it's, uh, sometimes there's shapes in there that you can recognize, but mostly it just looks like some sort of compute. Like they'd say, what kind of art, do, uh, what, like uh, as AI develops more sentience, uh, other than us being in a bit of a, a pickle. You know, this is where, if I was an anthropologist, this is where I would spend my, i say, well, what kind of art have you, have we determined, you know, we know AI loves running algorithms for us and machine learning and doing our chores and stuff for now. But what kind of art does AI like? If you sat down with some AI, really over a cup of whatever they prefer to drink, uh, one, I don't know, ones and zeros, uh, mildly steamed. Like, uh, I would think they would say, well, you know, those magic eye paintings, uh, we like them just fine on their own. Really beautiful stuff, uh, right up our alley. In fact, we have entire galleries, uh, 
of magic eye. We call we call them magic eye paintings. Uh, but they, we, you, right. I think I got that. They do just fine for you on your own. Well, it's interesting. I'm glad you had we have you here, AI, because uh, oh, your spokesper. Okay. Well, uh, can I just call you? Okay. Well, okay. Well, this is actually my podcast, so it's like uh, I appreciate that all the hard work you do on uh, our behalves or in preparation for. But uh, so I was explaining to a new listener of my podcast that like, uh, oh, usually like a regular podcast has an intro and it kind of works like three D glasses. You put them on, it's in three D. A magic eye painting. Even after you've done a thousand of them, you say, how, like for a lot of people, you say, how does this work again? I forgot. Or what do I get? Do I got to look at it or not look at it? I think it, and they say, well, make your, like, almost like you're drooling. That's how you look at it. Or that would be, what kind of look do you have on your face when you're about to drool? That's how you see a magic eye painting in 3D. It's not actually your eyes. Uh, it's capturing that entire moment where you're just uh, just about to drool, like staring at it in that way. And that's kind of how our intro works. It's uh, it takes a little bit. It's and because the reason the intro is uh, about twelve to fifteen minutes is because it's part of a lot of people's, a lot of listeners' wind down routine. Though some listeners do fall asleep right away, and some listeners skip the intro, and some wholeheartedly enjoy the intro or listen during the day to kind of relax. Uh, the intro is kind of built in a way to help you ease your way into bedtime. So that when, so when you, if you're new, you say, what is this, a 12 minute intro where you're talking about nothing? And I'd say, well, I was trying to make a, me- I think I successfully may have made a metaphor, just an in- incredibly convoluted one about uh, 3d and magic eye paintings. It's just tough to explain or make any sense of, uh, that kind of translates to how the podcast works. Also, I don't want to brag, but I think I just, uh, you know, in the coming future, I may be, I maybe have to be the lead person for human AI relations. And now that I have some insider knowledge, uh, about what kind of art AI likes, uh, it would be interesting. I would like to know what if we got Alan Iverson to have a podcast about AI, like AI on AI, uh, like, and maybe like that would, that would be a podcast I would definitely listen to. And maybe the the other AI, not Alan Iverson, but the AI, like they could all, like we could also make it like basketball or other things Alan Iverson's interested in. Uh, but I I just like that title AI on AI, or maybe it could be. I don't know. Maybe in the future, like uh, we could ha- like Alan Iverson could play AI. I mean, I guess we could. Maybe that could be a switch. What is that called? A Steam channel or whatever. What is it called? Uh, 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 I don't know what it's called, like streaming video game where AI, I mean, I don't know if AI is a game or Alan Iverson, the AI would play AI like in games. Uh, that might be more, uh, marketable, I guess, and realistic. Uh, or we could like, who's the dude, the actor that plays all the most in motion capture. Like, is there a way that Alan Iverson could actually play one-on-one against... No, I guess we don't have that technology. Also, I guess I'm in the middle of an intro for a sleep podcast. But I would just like to bookmark that uh, pod- podcast title. Uh, also, I- AI or a- any AIs, uh, hit me up if you want. If you're looking for someone with just podcast ideas, uh, who wants like a thir- 51% ownership, uh, but not a lot of work, hit, you know, give me a call. Uh, but anyway, so this intro of the show doesn't make a lot of sense. doesn't really go anywhere, but it's here to keep your company and ease you into bedtime, kind of like the rest of the show. So then after that, tonight in particular, we'll talk about, uh, uh, we, 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 oh, we'll talk about Star Trek, the next generation. And if you don't listen to Star or you don't watch Star Trek, the next generation, don't worry. It'll be a delightful recap. I mean, really, they're like episodic uh, fairy tales that happen in space. Uh, yeah, which is kind of recurring characters that you would definitely like. I don't think there's a. I mean, one of the things that drew me to the show is like, uh, I think a mo- majority of people on there are likable, and spending time with them is wonderful. So we'll talk about that. But you don't have to watch the show. You'll get it just fine. It'll be here to ease you into bedtime. There's business between the intro and the show. Then the, the end of the show are thank yous. 
So that's the structure of the show. If you're new, also, you don't need to listen and you, or pay attention. Like, you can, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, you can kind of barely listen, kind of listen. You say, hmm, it's like, I mean, I realize it's like, Scooch, you almost make sense. Uh, just barely, well, just barely might be an overestimation. You, uh, no, nearly is the wrong word, too. Almost might be too too much of a word. Uh, your idea is about three to three D. Well, yeah, your idea is about far fetched. Uh, is a little bit too far. Whatever between nearly and far fetched is uh, making sense. You're you're, you're the, that person on that uh, spectrum. You'd say far fetched. We have that over there, and nearly sensible. I don't know what would far fetched be. Oh, I, maybe I am far fetched. I think far fetched would be no narr- like no narrative, total impressionistic uh, type thing. I, I'm trying to bring it, like make it kind of make sense. It's just uh, like you know, you know, I, my hand, you know, my I got all the strings mixed up. Uh, but anyway, so oh, so you don't need to listen. Here's a weird thing: there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'm here to keep you company as you drift off at your leisure. So, so, uh, you could fall asleep in 10 minutes. You could fall asleep in two or three hours. If you need the company, uh, I'll be here. Uh, the shows are about an hour, but you can run them back to back. Uh, and I'm here to the very end so that if you can't sleep, uh, at least you have a, a friend in the deep dark night. That's really why I make the show is, uh, I'm here. If you need me kind of weird thing, like I'll be here while you sleep, uh, or if you can't sleep, I'm here. So I could be a comforting voice you're already asleep to, or, you know, I could be your boyfriend. And you say, well, I don't know what it is, but at least I got scoot, you know, at least I could try to barely, you know, even though I'm listening to scoots, I still say, okay. And you could, you know, I guess you say magic eye painting. I remember those kind of barely. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, they're probably like fractals are made by uh, computers. So, so those would, you couldn't. I mean, I'm sure there's like a, here's a, here's why AI likes magic eye paintings. I'll just be honest with you. It's a, it's a collaboration between uh, humans and computers. I'm assuming, cause I don't have anything to do with it, but I assume it's some sort of consort. You say, well, you know, we want to do, do the most famous magic eye painting is always dolphins jumping with balls or something in the air. But you say, okay, so how do we get to that? Well, we have to do this. Okay, so what colors should we use? What should be the initial thing you're seeing? It's a, so it's a thing where we, like, it might be, if, you, if, you, if you're listening to this in the future, uh, here's the thing, when, we ha- when we're fixing everything, at, you know, when you say, we'll call it the magic eye accords, and you don't even have to give me credit. Give, you know, give credit to whoever you need to, to get it, uh, get it done at the time. And you say, finally, we realize that we built it, that, like, it'll be the, you know, to say, and then AI said, the, the AIs or whatever, they, you know, they decide, they said we could all live together. Oh, within a magic art. Oh, no, sorry. That's not the, what I was going for. Sorry, some AI just called me from the future. It said, oh, within a magic eye painting. Said no, no, no. Humanity doesn't work that way. Just in the movies, we can't, we can't actually, you know, function within a magic eye painting. But maybe we could do that. Okay, here's the thing. Maybe magic eye. Maybe AIs aren't listening right now. You say, yeah, we're gonna go in there with you. Uh, Like we'll line up because we're a little bit slower and less efficient because we're human. And you say, all you, go ahead in first, all you AIs, get in that magic eye painting, and we'll meet you in there. And then we'll give them the old H-U-M-A-N, you know, shibashu, doors closed. Uh, yeah, Picard pulled that, so, you know, with, uh, like, and, and, and he said, they'll like it in there. There's plenty of, uh, you say, huh, I thought that dolphin was making eye contact with me. Oh, boy. So, anyway, I'm glad you're here. This podcast is goofy. It's a little bit different. But it's here to help, because uh, you deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, so I appreciate you coming by. Uh, give the show a shot. If it doesn't work, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. You could check that out. Uh, but I'm glad you're here. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive because I want to help you fall asleep. 
And here's a couple of ways we keep the show going. Hey, are you a, a Sleep With Me podcast a patron or have you been one in the past? Because uh, we got a really, really exciting announcement. Or if you've, you're on the fence, you've been thinking about it, uh, but you said, well, what's in it for me? Or, you know, you just kind of say, well, I keep putting it off, Scoots. Well, don't put it off any longer because uh, starting September 15th, you'll start to hear about this. We're going to do, because the patrons, the show reached 800 episodes and over 100 million downloads uh, recently. And we would not have been able to do that uh, as a free podcast uh, without the patrons who support the show. And so we're going to do a time capsule. And if you've ever been a patron from the beginning, uh, whether you signed up and you're no longer a patron or you're just about to become one, uh, you're going to get it to be a part of this time capsule. And if you supported the show by other means, don't worry, you'll hear about other ways to sign up for it. But uh Really, the patrons have carried the show on their backs. I wouldn't have been able to do it, or I would have had to put the podcast uh, as part of some service without the support of the patrons. And the reason people become patrons, you know, they're part of a community that keeps the podcast free for everybody. Uh, And I know they feel a lot of pride. You should if you're a patron and you're listening. Uh, And so this time capsule is going to be symbolic of all the people that made these 800 episodes possible, that made these hundreds of millions of downloads possible. And if you're, you, this, that sounds interesting to you and you want to sign up, uh, just go to sleepinbepodcast.com slash patron. Uh, you could still be a part of it. Not only that, you get your own RSS feed with ad-free episodes and story-only episodes starting at $5 and then $10 and up patrons. And those are full episodes. The only thing they're missing is, is the ads. Uh, and then $10 up patrons just get a, a couple all intro episodes every month. So if you like the all intro episodes, they get an all night episode. They get story only episodes. You can find out more at sleepingmepodcast.com slash patron, but you just pay attention because uh, none of this wouldn't have been possible. None of this would. Uh, because none of this would have been possible without your support. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thanks, for, thanks, uh, thanks for making this podcast possible. All right, we're back. We're talking about uh, Star Trek uh, episode, season two, episode eight, A Matter of Honor. And uh, you really, I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, I mean, it has, like, if you like Riker, oh boy, is this the episode, is this a good episode too? Uh, let's see, Riker in charge, that's the first thing I put, Starbase 179er. Uh, Wes and Data, Wes and Data are working together. Wes is in gray. This is hailing. Uh, then they say, hey, we're ready for the transfer. Uh, Data has the bridge. I guess Riker rolls out. Let's see, hailing frequencies open. Oh, yeah, Riker's calling uh, Starbase 179. Ready for your transfer on your mark. Okay, Commander Data, you have the bridge. And then he heads below. And Data's kind of sitting at the helm, uh, chilling. And then we see a planet, red planet, uh, desert-like, uh, clouds or dust. I put steeps or whatever they're called, S-T-E-P-E-S's. We'll look that up later. Data ready. Also, another question we'll research is data left or right-handed or not. Uh, and then uh, four uh, cadets or something come in. Riker gives them greetings. Uh, it put Wes, oh boy, because Wes is, uh, he makes a mistake, like a mistake. He's, he assumes uh, uh, this ensign that he knows him uh, just because he, like, uh, Mordak. He says, What are you doing here? And the dude says, I'm not Mordak, man. I'm Menden. I'm from Benzar. Uh, and, I mean, it, like, uh, I guess if we look at it through. Uh, one perspective, it's like Wes is a young, he, he, like sometimes you have to make these uh, mistakes. It's a little bit culturally insensitive and, uh, uh, you know, her, I mean, yeah, probably uh, like, uh, I don't know, Menden doesn't, uh, he definitely has his own inter- internal issue, like, uh, and to, to con- continue the thing, I said, he's kind of like a, what are they like? I looked up there. Well, we'll talk more about it. But I, like, he's a he's a bit blue, a grayish blue character. With uh, I, th- I forgot where they're from. Let me see. I got some uh, 
uh, welcome to the enterprise, uh, cultural exchange or the exchange program. Everybody follow Crusher for the indoctrination program or something. I said, what? Uh, he said, oh, actually, the, the dude Menden says, oh, no, naturally we look like we're from the same geostructure. Uh, and then Riker says, good to have you here, Ensign. We have briefing and indoctrination. Indo- I don't know why I find indoctrination just doesn't sound uh, like something I'm interested in for the Enterprise. Uh, and then Riker gets a call to b- 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 go to the phaser range. Uh, uh, from the boss, uh, from Picard, who I guess was down there the whole time. Oh, also, the the dude is a little bit, uh, at some point, I guess I don't know what, Riker gives a look to O'Brien, who has a laugh. I think that was from Menden. Oh, yeah, he says to Riker, I'm happy to be assigned to the Enterprise. It wasn't just luck. I requested it, and I know I'll be great help. So he's very, um, I don't know, emotionally connected with Menden. It, because certain personality part, parts, you like over enthusiastic. I think that's like, uh, like where you're being over enthusiastic to cover up a little of, uh, you know, FRI, GH, and then but T at the end. Uh, and you say, okay, like maybe I'll overcompensate a little. Maybe that's what Menden's doing, or maybe I'm just projecting a Star Trek characters, which is, you know, one of my hobbies. Okay, what do we got here? Nuber one. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Nuber one. Is that even a word? Is that really a thing? But Picard and uh, Riker down at the phaser range. Uh, kind of worth watching them practice uh, shooting at these lights. Uh, ones that they're on blue and gold. What the heck is Nuber one? That does sound like something they would say. It says O'Brien has a laugh. Nuber one. Uh, but they say, okay. Oh, Picard says, what do you think about these re- re- exchange kids or young adults? Uh, he says, positive. Uh, Menden's eager to please. And uh, Picard goes, that's a Benzite trait. Uh, uh, and, and then Riker, this is a really fun scene, actually. He says, hey, what about uh, an off? He goes, They're saying, we're thinking about somebody from exchanging somebody from the Enterprise. Riker goes, huh, tell me more. And he goes, well, there's a Klingon vessel in the area. Riker goes, I didn't know that any, like, a Starfleet officer served on a current Klingon vessel. It, it's so good. These two are really good together. This is even season two. Picard goes, no, no, neither have I. And Riker goes, it might prove beneficial. It, you know, they're really taught, like, they're, they're just like, this is like kind of like a professional flirting talk, or I don't know how to describe it, because it's not quite subtextual, but, because uh, they're talking about what they're talking about, but they're, you know what I mean. And he goes, no, neither have I. It might be beneficial, Riker says. Uh, Bakker goes, well, Worf's the best, right? He goes, no doubt, bah. I don't know why I said bah, but, but he says, yeah, for sure. And the record goes, well, who would you send? And Picard goes, hmm, good question. Maybe a volunteer? And this is when you, like, uh, like I don't know if this is a power move or not, but Riker goes, I might be interested, not that. And then Picard misses a target, and he pretends he didn't hear them, hear him. And I think Riker laughs. Let's see. Uh, colors, uh, uh, black, blue and yellow circle, Riker raising an idea, killing a vessel. Well, I put loving this subtext and talking around it. I might be interested. Darn, uh, Picard says when Riker's talking. And you think Riker laughs there, yeah, because he thought it was a, it, it was a power move. He, goes, he has to repeat himself, uh, which, I don't know, maybe it's just a way of Picard testing, saying, are you serious? Uh, and Riker says, in a charming way, he says, I wouldn't mind the assignment, sir. And Picard goes, why? He goes, no one's ever done it before. Why the heck else? Uh, he goes, you know, you heard of Brand the Brave? And Picard goes, no. And he goes, well, one day you will, dude. Like, forget that other nickname. And Picard goes, what are you even talking about? Riker goes, I don't know, Scoots is putting words in my mouth. Uh, he goes, nobody's ever done it before. And it's like it's already done because Picard says, well, I'll notify Starbase of your acceptance and they'll make arrangements. And so I put nice, uh, because no one's ever done it. Nice. And then the, then the episode opens, 
Captain's log 42506.5. Uh, departed to Klingon. Roberta Wharf, clear something up. Take a, t- 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 talk about my captain. Okay, let's see what really <laughs> what really happened. Uh, uh, Worf and Riker in the hallway talking, and he says, uh, Worf goes, yeah, I know a lot about my heritage. Riker goes, yeah, I want to clear something up. He goes, what are the duties of the first officer? Like, uh, goes a debate. There's like a debate, a serious debate club with your captain. He goes, yep. You're supposed to out debate him if you can. And Riker goes, what? Uh, wouldn't that be like chaos? Uh, and Worf goes, no, no, no. Keeps the captain on uh, at the top of the game. And by the way, your second officer is going to try to debate you right out of school. And Rick goes, wow, that must take some getting used to. And Worf goes, it's been working fine for centuries. Uh, Ian, he goes, it is different. And Worf says, many things will be different. So I liked that method of attrition. Uh, many things will be different. Okay, then the blue, uh, Menden, sorry, I wanted to call him blue guy. Observes a lot. He has, in quotes, helpful comments. He's like walking around with his hands behind the back. Uh, like I said, we'll try to look at him through the lens of empathy. So, but it is a little bit difficult because he's kind of like a explainer and, and like a like he knows all. And he does have this uh, like a journey in this episode. Uh, so he walks around with his hands behind the back. Uh, first off, I put WTF like. Uh, Cause I don't, I didn't look this up, but it's like, like some like exchange dude can just walk around the bridge, like looking at people's stuff is astute. Somebody says the word astute. Wes is a bit taken aback, it even shakes his head. Like, uh, like, are you kidding me? Like, uh, with this, uh, he gulps too. Oh, it's a, sh- it's not a pleasant shaking of the head. Like it's a fresh, like, uh, then we have Riker eating Klingon food. And this is the Pulaski season, or Pulaski. And she's good in these scenes because she says, she, she's like uh, representing kind of like the audience. She says, What are you, what are you eating? And uh, Breaker's full bore uh, snacking on this stuff. Uh, Pippius, uh, Targ, Gah. Pulaski, uh, Pulaski, yeah, she says, uh, Gah. And he goes, Oh, yeah. Uh, he goes, You want to try anything? She goes, No, no, no. And she goes, are you going to be able to eat all this stuff? Uh, and he goes, uh, well, I got to be, you know, I need to be full. You know, I got to be able to be, be participate. Uh, and she she goes, okay, well, they're, you know, they're same, like, uh, I don't know if they're mammals, but she says, you know, their physiology is similar to ours. So that she tries to give Riker some peace of mind. She also is like not, she's like a little bit uh, judgmental of their ways of doing things. Uh, Riker says, you want to have something to drink? She goes, no, I'm abstaining because it's your last hour. I'm bored. And they said, abstaining from something that doesn't have any alcohol is interesting. A feast before transfer. I didn't realize this was like a, like a thing. Uh, Riker goes, your sacrifice will not go unnoticed. Good job of kissing my, uh, side of my beard. Uh, then Picard shows up. He goes, oh, this is the feast before transfer. He goes, I've done it before, but he goes, I'd pick something else, uh, more palatable. Riker goes, this is the palatable stuff. And then Picard brings it back to the ground. He says, okay, well, we know so little about them. So much to learn. He really great opportunity. And I envy you. Uh, Riker, and uh, so that's cool. Uh, I envy you. Riker really does seem to enjoy the food. Riker gives transportation sentimental note efficient bridge Klingon vessel approaching. The wharf looks uncomfortable. Klingon, okay, so let's run through this here. So in the hall, uh, uh uh, Worf gives Riker a little uh, transponder, uh, just in case, precautionary. And, but he says, no, not precautionary, efficiency commander. And then we're on the bridge, uh, Klingons approaching, hailing, pa. Uh, uh, Picard says, on screen, I'm Picard. He goes, I'm Cargan, the captain of the Klingon vessel, pa. 
maybe I don't even know how to pronounce it, but uh, he goes, get your first officer on board. Uh, Kirk goes, by the way, great Riker's a great guy. He goes, I don't like, no thanks. Uh, I'll see myself uh, screen off. Uh, and then Menden goes to, to all people, Worf, he goes, not very hospital, uh, hospitable, are they? And Worf is like, dude, get back to work. Uh, he goes, it's not your concern. Observe your station, Ensign Menden. He was like, what? What is this? This dude does need like his journey this episode. They said, Blue Dude, Klingon leans back. Uh, that was on the screen. Then Blue Dude has a comment for everything. Uh, then he does uh, a scan of uh, their thing. Oh, you was sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. And Worf goes, you didn't. Uh, and then he notices like there's uh, something on the hall of the Klingon vessel, but he doesn't say anything. Uh, and then Picard goes, beam Riker over, acknowledged, Ryan sends him over. Picard goes, Data, you're on the bridge. Um, inconclusive was the scan that, kid, that Menden ran. Oh, Brian, heck no for me. Because maybe he says, are you going to go over there? Oh, yeah, he goes, no way for me. He goes, I'm trying to get a date with, like, in the Arboretum. Because uh, maybe he hasn't got that date yet. Uh, and he goes, are you worried? Riker goes, no. He goes, well, and Riker goes, just get me over there. Uh, let's see. For me, energize. We watch the vessel head off. Uh, Menden stops Picard, uh, which, uh, Picard goes, resume course, uh, take over data. I'm going to observe, uh, and he goes, yeah, he just wanted to introduce myself and Menden. And Picard goes, good. Okay. He goes, you got a couple ideas to run by here. Uh, I'm really swift on the uptake. In Picard, which is a little bit weird, he goes, on this, he goes, we follow chain of command, which I'm like, wait a second, don't all, I mean, maybe men, uh, Benzites don't follow chain of command. I don't know. He goes, Worf is uh, your point of uh, contact. And he goes, sorry, I just wanted to impress upon you. And Picard goes, no, sorry, uh, we should have explained it better. And then Worf goes, Ensign Menden, you may impress me. Uh, which is like, man, do I love Worf. Uh, no need to apologize. Yeah, he does a hair toss, like a slight hair toss when he says that to me. Very red. I don't know what that means. Riker, oh, the, the inside of the Klingon ship's got like red lights. Uh, Riker has to let them know who's in charge. Uh, so let's see, Riker goes in, oh, the, the, his second in command goes, uh, he's kind of like playing Riker. He goes, uh, he goes, huh, you never seen anybody like you before. He goes, well, I'm average everyday human man who just happens to be your commander. Uh, and he goes, what was your order again? He goes, take you to command and uh, command the captain. He goes, yeah. And Riker goes, let's get to it then. And then Riker gets on there. And we kind of learn, like, he's like, hey, I'm from Starship Enterprise. He goes, not anymore, dude. You're Pa or whatever. You're Riker, first officer of Klingon Pa. He goes, you tend to disobey any Federation orders. Uh, he goes, no. And then Cargan goes, where's your loyalties? And Riker goes, I don't understand. He goes, uh, we, we, he goes we're peaceful, but this is our ship. Uh, he goes, I got to count on everybody. He goes, where are your loyalties? And Riker goes, uh, I've been assigned to serve the ship and obey your orders. I'll do that. Uh, and Cargan goes, uh, are you going to take an oath? And Riker goes, what do you mean oath? I just said I would. Uh, and then Clock starts to debate Riker. In a very 80s action, the 80s uh, like TV shows had these action debates. Uh, so this is like one of these action debates because uh, he says, uh, point of order. Uh, and the uh, uh, Gargan says, I recognize Lieutenant Clagg's point of order. And Riker goes, you got something to say to me, Clagg? Say it outside of parliamentary procedure. And Clagg says, okay, I don't believe you. And he goes, are you debate? You, do, do you want to debate me? And he goes, correct. Uh, and he goes, do you have a second? And the captain, 
The captain goes, I leave it to the band, you know, whatever. And Picard, Picard goes, uh, so they have an action debate. And Picard, like, totally out debates him because he's got the skills of, like, uh, Picard's got, like, alpha empathy and compassion. So he can use both those skills. Uh, and that guy's just younger coming up. He was using all, like, uh, ag aggro debate, which Picard says, well, I agree with you. And he goes, oh, oh. And Picard goes, you accept that I'm in charge. And he goes, well, huh, okay. And Picard goes, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I follow Cargan. You follow me. He goes, or do you want to be debated right off the ship? And the guy Clag, he goes, I'll, I'll follow you. And then Cargan says, and Riker, you'll follow me. And he says, of course. Let's see if I missed anything. That is correct. I can count on you. Loyalties. Uh, okay, like the commander sat down and watched the debate. Uh, he really enjoyed it. Uh, when it's done, Riker blows out like of an O mouse, like, like that. Uh, and then Worf, we're on uh, Enterprise Bridge. Worf says there's an unknown substance on the dorsal section of the engineering. Uh, or Menden finds it on the dorsal section. They magnify it. Uh, it's like rust or something, subatomic rust, we'll say. Uh, but it's doubling in size like every 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, they see, they go, where is it from? And they go, uh, and Menden goes, it was on the Klingon ship. Uh, and Picard goes, who'd you tell about that? And Menden goes, nobody. Uh, it was working on a report. And Orf goes, you're supposed to report anything that's out of ordinary. And Picard goes, come on, dude. And he goes, uh, but I didn't have a full report. Uh, I couldn't, like, I didn't have all my bases covered. And Data goes, how'd you come to that uh, decision? He goes, Benzite regulation, uh, full analysis and resolution is our procedure. And Picard goes, that's not our procedure. He goes, it's uh, it, any possibility of rust or anything else you reported. Uh, decision is not yours. Uh, you got it? Menden goes, yep. And he goes, okay, get back to work then. Keep figuring it out. And he says, it's going to take a while. And Picard goes, go ahead, take your time, just get it done. Data, supervise. And he goes, aye, sir. And then Picard walks off and Worf goes, and I'm going to teach you some etiquette. Uh, he really says that. Uh, inner probe, prioritize. Uh, how did you come to that decision? Something gone wrong. Oh, internship gone wrong. That's what I put. Uh, then there's a break. Uh, Riker's log. Uh, I guess his personal log, right? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I'm on Bog, uh, impressed with everybody. They're very single-minded. And they're in the mess hall. Riker's getting and giving looks from everybody. And he's pretending, he, he's like using his experience. Mm, bra, bra, is this Brexit? Uh, Papyrus? Uh, and they go, what about the Roke? Roke? He goes, oh boy, is it good. And they go, what about some guy? He goes, yeah, oh, yeah. He goes, huh, I never had it in this fashion, prepared this way before. And they go, do you want something? <laughs> yeah, this is like, probably like, you know, they kind of give Riker a hard time. Uh, and they go, you know, there's no uh, old debaters on Klingon ships. Uh, and Riker goes, I'm sure they debated with honor. And Clay goes, yeah, maybe you'll stick around. Uh, then they talk about Riker's looks. Uh, and I guess, like, uh, dating on the ship is a lot. I guess it's a lot on both ships. So somebody says, well, I'd like to, maybe we could have dinner together. And Riker says, we're having dinner right now. Uh, let's see. But they also say, man, you got a sense of humor. Uh, we didn't think you, 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 you uh, humans had a sense of humor. Because Riker even cracks some jokes that they all, uh, oh, they say, would you say you're a typical Federation officer because you have humor? Uh, and Clegg says, you're not what I expected. Uh, and he goes, oh, I was thinking the same way. Uh, he goes, I never, he goes, Worf, Worf doesn't really laugh. Uh, he goes, so I didn't realize Klingon said, and they go, there's much to learn. And Riker goes, that's why I'm here. Uh, 
And Clyde goes, feel free to ask any questions. And he goes, okay. Uh, or maybe Riker says, oh, yeah. He goes, uh, I don't know. They talk about families, uh, uh, you know, history, Romulans, uh, you know, ups and downs, uh, like, uh, you know, family stuff, like Worf and everybody else. You say, oh, it's family stuff, huh? And Riker goes, Riker closes it well, he, or the writers do. He says, yesterday, I did not even know how to uh, eat God. Oh, because they say Klingons don't express the way, feelings the way humans do. Uh, let's see, our future, a little down about the Romulans and his dad. Yesterday, I did not know how to eat God. Everyone happened. Everyone, I don't know what that is. Uh, uh, but Picard, Data, and Menden are uh, checking relevant new stuff. Uh, the Klingon, uh, they already have 12 centimeters of rust, uh, which Worf glares. Uh, they say, find them. It's not good that they have a rust hole on their hull. Hull. Then we see Riker uh, walking. Ask for a repeat. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a space rust. Uh, no way. And they say this hole is growing. We only got eight hours. This is on the Klingon ship. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, they say, okay, we got eight hours. Okay. They say, what is tactics? What do you think? Because uh, they think that uh, Enterprise planted this rust. Uh, and they say they scanned that area of the ship for two minutes. Uh, it must be a, they did a rust deposit for some reason. Like, uh, basically, this is the only. Uh, other ship we've encountered, uh, Riker goes, it's normal to scan ships, uh, and they go, well, why would you use a rust beam? He goes, we don't, we don't use rust beams, we're allies, and the, Riker goes, it's not, uh, how we work, uh, and Rickargan says, no, uh, you, you don't rust a Klingon ship, uh, time for, you know, time to get to, like, uh, and, Riker's like, what? Uh, and they go, yeah, we gotta do, we gotta, ru- we're gonna have to rust them first and debate them right out of space. Yeah, it makes no sense, Riker says. Uh, indeed, uh, then I think there's an ad break on a Riker. They say, cloak the ship, and there's a Riker close up. Uh, then there's an Enterprise shot, and then Will uh, tries to help mend it, and uh, he goes up to him, he tries to be nice. Uh, and he says, geez, you just made an error. Uh, and he goes, you can't recover from an error. Uh, that's not how benzites work. And R- R- Will goes, you know, we've really learned about resiliency on this ship. It's try too. He goes, don't worry, you're resilient. I can see it. He goes, thanks. Uh, but he goes, that's it. Uh, and he goes, I don't know why you're trying to be nice to me. He goes, uh. And he goes, well, people make mistakes. He goes, you didn't put the rust on the ship. Uh, you just saw it, and then you didn't know procedure. And the dude goes, uh, why are you being so nice to me? And Wes goes, because I thought you might need a friend. Uh, and, you know, Menden's kind of like, uh, I guess he has like one of those negative egos that I'm familiar with. He goes, well, I must have really like, uh, you know, have guy all over my face, you know. And West says, well, this is what the exchange program is all about, learning uh, and exchanging information and, and then, uh, you know, like uh, growing. And he goes, uh, resi- that's kind of part of resiliency. I don't think he, the dude quite get, gets it because he goes, I'm going to, like, he's an all or nothing thinker, which I know well. He goes, I'm going to succeed brilliantly and work really hard. Uh, very all or nothing. Will's hands are crossed, but Will's happy. You know, he tried to help. Uh, then they, we see the Klingons. They see Jesus' rust is like uh, toast. Uh, and they go, Riker, go down and look uh, out one of the portholes. Uh, and Riker goes, uh, they, and he says, dude, keep an eye on this guy. Maybe he rusted the ship. And Riker had de- de- debated this dude, Clagg, who says, well, why would he be here f- to rust a ship he's on? And Cargan goes, because he's human, so they're, uh, he goes, uh, 
I don't know. And Clyde goes, I don't know. He goes, he might be up to something, but uh, he's very brave. Uh, he goes, he goes they don't, they're not Klingons. They don't think the same way we do. And they say, okay, we see the Enterprise. It's headed towards us. And I guess it's another all or nothing thing. And he goes, Cargan goes, see, told you so. Riker, he goes, Riker comes back and Riker goes, what do you mean? And he goes, the Enterprise is following us. And why? And Riker says, well, why don't you ask them? And they go, 15 minutes, we'll be meeting up. And Cargan goes, uh, prepare my debate suits and get the rust, rust, you know, rust the device ready. Um, let's see. Know your rank. Uh, what is that? Bridge data. Keep an eye on him. Second starts. No, no step down. Stare down. Oh, there's a couple stare downs. Intercept course. Riker's back. You almost had me believing. I don't know what that is, but, uh, something like it definitely not. It looks like it was never written in English, even though I'm sure when I wrote it, uh, it looks like if you took trapeze and triangle and combined them into one word with none of those letters, uh, like or maybe it says T N G P R Z P Z U E. I don't know. Following us, uh, why ask him? Reasons clear. Lots of debating. Bridge data standing. Uh, and they say, well, where's the uh, Klingon vessel? Well, it's cloaked or it's been rusted away. Uh, they may be here to help. Uh, I think that's back on the other one. Uh, this is when they meet up. Because uh, uh, they say, well, what if they're here to help? Uh, and he goes, uh, they're not here to help. Or, uh, don't forget my rank. Uh, Mark goes, I'm just trying to help you understand. Uh, and Kurgan goes, uh, he goes, I'm captain. You're supposed to obey me, your oath. Uh, and Riker goes, yep, you're right. Uh, he goes, okay, tell me the easiest way to rust out the Enterprise or debate your captain. Riker goes, no. And he goes, well, you have to. He goes, well, I'm not going to tell you the Enterprise secrets. Uh, and he goes, well, then what good is your oath? Uh, what good is Starfleet then? And Riker goes, I can't break a past vow. He goes, those oaths supersede, but he, he's almost debating. He goes, those oaths are prior oaths that supersede my oath with you. And Cargan says, those oaths are in conflict, which Riker says, no, they're not. I'll obey your orders. I'm going to serve on this ship uh, and do what must be done. Uh, but it, it, uh, your orders don't supersede my per- previous orders or oaths. And Cargan goes, good, because that was actually a test to see if you were an oath breaker. And now I see you aren't, uh, so you're very, you're in my good graces again. So I don't know if that was the Klingon trying to save, like, uh, like face with the rest of his crew, or he was real, it really was a test. Uh, so, oh, also, during all this, uh, there's some really good shots. Uh, the second in command is looking on... Uh, I forgot his name, Clagg, uh, with a dreamy look. He's watching Riker, uh, uh, and, oh, he even gets a, Riker even gets a hug. He goes, you're really a Klingon, the captain says, but the Clagg really has dreamy looks for Riker. Uh, then we see Menden working on the computer. He seems happy. And let's see. Oh, he goes, yeah, I figured out the rust, uh. He goes, it's like a titanium uh, thing. And they go, neutrino, a neutrino beam, a tunneling neutrino beam will clear it right out. Uh, and Parker, Parker, Parker goes, great job, uh, do it. Uh, and uh, then he says, Worf, add that to the hailing message. The message is neutrino beam will clean the rust. Uh, then we're back on the PA. They say, okay, they changed. Now they want you to use a neutrino beam. It's rust. Uh, and Riker says, see? And Cargan goes, no, nah, they're not. It's not true. And then it's, but there's still a quote. Uh, then it's like Picard Captain's Log 425.07.8. Uh, we're looking for the Klingon ship. Can't find it. Uh, can't find any debris. Uh, data says that. Uh, and Data says, no debris, they must be here in cloaked. Uh, 
And we could, we could goes, okay. And then Data says, we should probably go to Red Alert. He goes, make it so. Worf goes, I. So then on the Klingon ship, they say, okay, now they're on Red Alert. Shields up. Uh, and Riker goes, yeah, that's a procedure when things are strange. Uh, of course, you put your shields up. Yeah, they just de-rusted their ship. Uh, uh, let's see. Assume cloaked agreed. Make it so. Oh, I love it when he says that. Uh, uh, Riker. Okay, so then, let's see. So, back in the ship, uh, they, Cargan goes, well, they're f- fools for putting their their debate shoes on unless they're ready to debate. Uh, and Riker goes, you only get one shot at Captain Picard in a debate, so you better have some opening line. And he goes, I only need one. Uh, he goes, prepare my debate, you know, my debate, uh, like a speaker or whatever to launch. And then Riker says, well, it's, he goes, you want to be closer so they could hear it and that there's no lag between your speaking. And he goes, so 40,000 kilometers, it'll give them, he goes, it'll also give Captain Card less time to respond. And they go, wow, that's actually smart. Uh, and they say, okay, count down to 40 kilometers. Uh, and Riker, you'll call, you'll give the word for the final debate. Uh, and then Rick says, okay. And they go, any questions? He goes, yeah, one thing. He goes, I don't trust your judgment. Uh, he goes, you're ca- causing a confrontation debate when we don't need to. And the guy, Cargan, goes, are you finished? And Rick goes, sure. And they go, commence. And then they go, we're closing. And then Riker pulls out that transponder and turns it on. And the Cargan goes, what is that? Uh, he goes, nothing. Just pulled it out of my boot at this opportune time. And Cargan goes, hand it over then. So then we switch back to Worf, who goes, yeah, the transponder's on. Uh, he goes, uh, he goes, it's the one I gave to Riker. And Picard goes, okay, O'Brien, lock on that. Uh, and O'Brien says, well, we're not quite in range. Uh, and Picard goes, we've got to stretch it. Uh, you know, it's a transponder. And, uh, uh, he goes, we got to know what's going on. And he goes, Riker's the only one. So beam him onto the bridge, uh, on my command. And O'Brien goes, okay, wait till 40,000. Uh, so then Worf's counting down, transponder room's counting down. And because he got to switch the shields off and beam him on. And then they're at 40,000, uh, and then on the pod, they're at 40,000. So they're going to drop their cloak and get ready. So everybody's getting ready for this 40,000 moment. And as soon as they get hit, uh, Cargan gets beamed over uh, to the bridge. Uh, we prepare, energize, standing, something field flak. I don't know what that means. Uh, and then Riker goes, I'm your captain now. Uh, we, and then what is this? Oh, Riker has no honor. That's what the dude says when he's on his ship or on the uh, bridge of the Enterprise. Uh, and Riker says, uh, yeah, I'm your captain now. I've relieved Cargan. He was acting irrationally. He goes, serve the ship as I have. Uh, and yeah, Cargan throws a fit. I was tricked by Riker. He's not uh, honorable. Uh, and Riker goes, okay, turn off your shields uh, and obey my orders. Uh, and they go, well, what are you doing? He goes, don't worry, I'm on the ship. Uh, he goes, so that's my order. He's cloaking shields off. And I, re- I repeat, cloaking shields off. It's a pa. Uh, he goes, uh, he goes, Cam- Captain William Riker, Captain William Riker of the pa. He goes, so lower your shields and surrender. And Picard goes, shields lowered, surrendered. And Cargan goes, I demand to go back to my ship. Uh, and Picard goes, get him ready to beam back. Uh, and uh, then Brian goes, okay. And then he goes, Riker, we can fix your ship right away. He goes, Riker goes, thank you, Captain Picard. And this one was a little bit more subtle. So let's see, here to assist, lower your shields, uh, lower your shields. Uh, Thank you. So then Riker and Cargan are together on the bridge. Uh, 
And he goes, Ricardo goes, you should have just debated me out of space. And Riker goes, I don't want to be in charge. And he goes, well, you tricked me. Riker goes, who cares? You're back in charge. And he goes, get back to work. Uh, and Riker refuses to listen, uh, which uh, means that he gets fired off, the sh- gets kicked off the ship. And then Clagg, who uh, loves Riker, uh, he says, yes, Captain. He goes, he whispers. It was really great. I loved it. He goes, whispers to Riker, you understand Klingons better than I thought, Commander. Riker goes, thank you, my friend. And I wonder if they cut out one more scene with Menden. I mean, he did, like, fix the thing. But he doesn't have, like a, like a like, a full proper conclusion of, like, well, I learned to listen and not be a know-it-all. But Riker and Picard are together, and uh, he says, well, that was the short assignment, and or the shortest in the history. Picard goes, being well away from you, it was like the longest. Well done. And Riker goes, I learned quite a bit. And Picard goes, now nah, how to uh, uh, reformulate an initial debate when you're getting kicked off your ship. And Picard goes, welcome back, number one. Uh, and he goes, Worf, take uh, 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 Riker for a walk. Uh, and then Riker says, geez, that really worked, Worf. And he goes, I'm glad I did. And he says, you come from a brave and unique people, and I'm glad you're with us on the Enterprise. And Worf goes, thank you, and welcome home. And that was the end of the episode. A good, a good episode. And let's see what, what we had to look up here. Uh, a couple of interesting things. Uh, oh, the word hail. Uh, in this situation, let's see, this is from Wiki, 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 the dictionary on Wikipedia. Uh, let's see. Uh, hail is a noun. Uh, balls are pieces of ice. Uh, hail is a verb. Uh, to pour down in rapid succession, to send or release hail or said of the weather when it's falling, or two, which is a variant of hail, H-A-L-E, uh, for health or safety from the 13th century, uh, like in uh, Paradise Lost, uh, is to greet or give a salutation to, to salute, uh, or to name, designate, or call, or to call out loudly to gain the attention of... Uh, uh, there's also an adjective, uh, an exclamation of respectful or reverent salutation, occasionally a familiar greeting. That's where the uh, football term Hail Mary comes from. Uh, so that's a little bit about it. I'll link to it. Uh, but then it brought up, like, okay, what are some of the other... Oh, that's still Wiki-Nictionary. <laughs> wiki wiki dictionary. Yeah, but then there's like a, the hail is a form of precipitation, which is distinct from sleet or ice pellets, uh, though they're confused. It's irregular balls or lumps of ice, uh, which is called a hailstone. Uh, ice pellets usually are cold weather. Hail does not usually occur in cold weather. Unlike other forms of water ice, uh, which is made of rime, Ice pellets are smaller and translucent. Hailstones usually are between 5 millimeters and 15 centimeters. Uh, uh, they're most possible in thunderstorms like cumulonimbus. Uh, it requires environments of strong upwind, upward motion of air within the storm uh, and lower the heights of, of the freezing level. Uh, in the mid latitudes, hail is in the interior forms in the interior of continents, uh, while in the tropics it gets confined confined to high eleva- uh, elevations. Uh, any sort of storm that does create a hail is a hail storm. Uh, they could be irregular or and clumped together, layered, uh, transparent ice or alternating layers of transparent and translucent ice. Uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about it. Uh, it's just interesting, uh, you know, especially for kids when you see it. Uh, and what about step or steep? I don't know how to pronounce the word, I'm being honest. S-T-E-P-P-E. Let's just say it's a step with a silent arrest of it. Uh, 
in physical geography, it's an ecoregion. Uh, grasslands, shrublands, temperate grasslands, savannas, shrub, shrubland biomes. Uh, it's characterized by grassland plains without trees, apart from those near rivers and lakes. Uh, the prairie of North America is an example, though it is not called such. A step may be arid, semi-arid or covered with grass, shrubs, or both, depending on season or latitude. Uh, the term is used to denote the climate encountered in regions too dry to support a forest, but not dry enough to be a, a desert. Uh, there's usually uh, characterized by semi-arid or continental climate. It, it can go like uh, from warm in the summer to cold in the winter. Besides the difference between summer and winter, the differences between day and night can be very great. Uh, there's the highlands of Mongolia and northern and northern Nevada, which can really uh, exemplify those extremes. This is all from Wikipedia, by the way. Uh, especially the mid latitude ones. Uh, there's two types. There's a temperate or true step, uh, which is in the continental areas of the world. Uh, further subdivided, like the Rocky Mountain ones. And then there's the subtropical ones uh, with a Mediterranean-like climate. Uh, there's subtypes including shrub step and alpine step. Uh, the Eurasian, Eurasian, uh, the Eurasian grass step of the temperate glass, grasslands, savannas, and shrublands had a, a role in the spread of the horse, the wheel, and Indo-European languages. Uh, the Indo-European expansion and, and diverse invasions of horse, horse archer civilizations of the steppe uh, eventually led to the rise of uh, Mycenae Greece and the amalgamation of Indo-Europeans uh, uh, in the pre-Greek population. Uh, there was the Dorian and some the late Bronze Age. A lot of stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting stuff like. Uh, I don't know. I've just always seen that word, and I've, I, I thought it would have been like the flat place, uh, like a flat mountaintop, uh, but I was wrong, uh, and I love being wrong. Now, here's a question that came up. It's like, is Data left or right-handed? And he is uh, left-handed. Uh, Noonien uh, Sung uh, programmed his uh, androids with a dominant hand. This is from Stack Exchange. Uh, uh, Brett, I guess Brett Spiner is left-handed. Someone said uh, Noonien, like his grandfather, Arik, or Arik uh, was left-handed. Why did he make his uh, androids left-handed? Uh, let's see. According to the most upload, upvoted answer, uh, Data and Lore are left-handed because Soon scanned his own brain to provide the basis for the positronic brains. Uh, and since Soon himself was left-handed, his neural pathways were laid down with the same handedness. Uh, when Data, uh, oh, with Lal, uh, is Lal's handedness is not canonically confirmed. Uh, she uses both hands and could be ambidextrous because uh, Data scanned his brain for Lal's brain. Uh, so this is interesting. I mean, I just was wondering. Uh, and now we know Data's left-handed. Uh, and let's just finish up with uh, Benzites. Oh, let's do a stoot if you're taking an SAT. Uh, astute, S A. Uh, let's see how do you spell it. Uh, astute, uh, A S T U T E. Quickly or critically discerning or shrewd or crafty is the uh, adjective. Uh, astute. Uh, so there, there you go. Just in case you get that on a test or you want to use it. Uh, Whoa, well, that's a astute thing you said. Uh, you know, you could use it for fun uh, all the time. Like if someone, you know, you know, your dog breaks wind, you could say, that's very astute of you, Koa. Okay, so then I headed over to Memory Alpha Wiki, uh, memory alpha, memory-alpha.fandom.com for Benzite. Uh, there are species of uh, humanoids native to the Federation planet Benzar. Uh, their contact was limited before the 24th century, but in 2364, uh, Mordak, uh, 
the creator of the Mordok strategy, became the first Benzite to join Starfleet, edging out other candidates, including Wesley Crusher. Uh, relations between Benzites and the Federation expanded at this time. Uh, then there was officer exchange programs, uh, uh, and Starfleet officers served on Benzite ships and vice versa. Uh, following Mordok's uh, footsteps, other Benzites, such as Hoya, eventually enrolled in the Academy, uh, which was also seen on Deep Space Nine episode The Ship. Uh, the Ship. Uh, Benzites are known to be meticulous, uh, uh, even the regulations are, uh, which kind of played out in this episode. 2374, uh, during the, the Dominion stuff, uh, you know, that's like, I want to know. So Benzites are smooth, hairless, uh, blue or green skin. Uh, they have tendrils, uh, and uh, they don't normally breathe oxygen and nitrogen. So they wear, like, a breathing apparatus, which kind of seems to put out some, like, uh, whatever they can breathe, uh, which seems like it has a little bit of water vapor. Uh, so that's just a little bit about uh, Benzite. Uh, so thanks, and uh, here's some thank yous after this and plenty more to go. Uh, load up other episodes if you need it, all right?
All right, I want to thank everybody that reviewed the show recently. Uh, Georgie140 from Canada. Almost as good as my sleep meds. As a stressed out student with a lot going on, uh, sleep with me is everything I need. Uh, I set my sleep timer, stop the episode around the end, and I'm gone before the intro's done. And, you know, they're students, so they're, they're, they're thankful that the patrons support the show because they're still studying, and, and that's great. Uh, Sleepy K88 from the UK says, My boyfriend, uh, long term insomnia, all night worker, having something that consistently helps me fall asleep is a godsend. I uh, find Scooter's brand of meandering storytelling really helps distract my brain and lets me drift off to sleep nine times out of ten. Thanks for being my boyfriend, Borbe, Borbara, Borbud, uh, BB, math lover. Oh, B- so this is like a, a BB-88 math lover. Uh, thanks, Scoots. Love the pod. Really shows how much love and effort Scoots puts into it, so thank you. Just entertaining enough to hold my interest without making me LOL. Recommend it all the time. Thank you. Uh, JP123469. Uh, life of Saver. Uh, up until use use it all the time now. Seriously considering supporting this on Patreon. Uh, thank you so much, JP, from the UK. Uh, Roropator, Roropator, or Roraptor. Uh, this could be, so, this, it was just on C Jurassic Right with Steven, so this is exciting. Because uh, I don't know if Blue, is this you? Uh, surprisingly effective. Uh, Scooter balances a consistent style, speaking with a mildly entertaining content that bores me to sleep, keeps me company. When I wake up in the middle of the night with Sleep With Me podcast, I look forward to bedtime. Ting Tong Tang from the UK says, Super amazing. Thank you. Uh, barely with one uh, ILY scooter. Oh, thank you. The uh, first time I listened, I couldn't sleep because it's uh, subtly fun, somewhat subtly funny. Works like charm. Quiet ramblings of a creative mind. Thank you. Uh, sleeplessness solved. That's from Ali MCH. Uh, sleep with me has become my number one way to get to sleep fast. Uh, Scoots' d- dull, dulcet tones knock me out right away. Thank you. Uh, Light Girl 1979. Fabulous. Uh, Scooter. I had a rock tumbler too. I did yard work all day. Picked up five rather amazing rocks. Thanks for the podcast. I really have an early morning. Thank you so much. Night, John Boy. It's funny, I had a roommate this weekend, uh, uh, Hal, uh, from We Got This, and, and Tights and FIGHTS, uh, and Night Val, uh, and uh, I, I, I would say that to him, Night John Boy. Uh, Rot, Rotten Geek says, uh, so nice to drift off to, great, I don't have to manufacture these thoughts myself, someone else does. Uh, not so fascinating, I need to sleep, but then my mind wanders away just right. Uh, I want to thank everybody that reviewed the show over on Apple Podcasts. I really appreciate that. Uh, Sleep With Me exists as a free podcast because people that support the sponsors and support the show directly on Patreon. So I really, really appreciate everybody that goes out of their way. The show grows by people's word of mouth, just like the people that wrote the reviews. You know, taking the time, sharing their honest experience with people in their lives or showing them and telling them about your other favorite podcasts, too. Uh, it's just a great way, just a natural way to share a show, whether it's online or in person. So I really appreciate that. And you were probably remember Night Vale Presents, one of you, know, a show I did a tribute episode, well, I worked with someone to do a tribute episode to, uh, entire season out there, ready for you to consume it all. Then you can listen to the album. It makes a sound. Uh, find out why you should remember Wim Faros, uh, and then you should listen to the brilliant music. Uh, you know, meet everybody, uh, take a trip to Rosemary Hills. It, it really, really just is the kind of podcast you could descend into. Uh, you can find It Makes a Sound uh, and your podcast app of choice or at nightvalepresents.com. We're also a proud member of PRX. You can see everything they're doing at prx.org. And here's the thing. I'm here for you. There's plenty of other episodes ready to go if you need it, okay? So just go ahead and queue them up. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to go. Uh, thanks so much and good night.